It's a nice little piece of equipment. It is. The Zoom 6, my friend. It makes life so much easier. It's portable. It's rugged. I just wanted the easiest setup that I could have with good quality and still be able to travel. And this is what I came up with. The Zoom 6. And it has four inputs for mics, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, this adapter. Um, you, I can either extend that to two additional mics or there's just different uh, adapters you can put, like sure. mics and different things. That's hmm. a proprietary adapter, though. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. I have the case over there. They have a couple uh, head things in there. But, but that's not like a universal adapter. Either. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, definitely proprietary. But I like it. It works out. And then you pair it with these headphones. Like, I know. Yeah, the broadcast headsets. Yeah, these are sound good. A yeah. lot, lot better uh, equipment than the uh, KJ Unfiltered <laughs> days. Yeah. Well, you guys have been doing it for so long. <laughs> so, in case you didn't know, we already started. For the folks listening, I have Matt Frazier and Brett Otten. You guys each introduce yourself because we have two people, right? right. So you know whose voice is who. Okay. I am uh, Brett Otten, uh, Editor-in-Chief of KnuckleJunkies.com. And I'm Matt. <laughs> I can't, can't take this guy. I can't take this guy anywhere. Can't Low energy. Him. Matt Fraser, the man behind the scenes. You actually help with multiple podcasts, or you have in the past. You're like the technical guy. No? Yeah, yeah I uh, I kind of learned on the job with KJ. That's kind of a fun. Yeah. That's part of this project mm -hmm. was just some weird ways to expand our our skill sets and try new things. And yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of crashes and fails, but, you know. But, yeah, I, uh, I just learned up some things, and. Someone was like, hey, I I'm have a question about this, so I just offer my services. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good at learning new technology, but I'm not very good at monetizing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's the, that's the million-dollar question. How do you monetize this stuff? But uh, So what are your backgrounds? I know, Brett, you're a writer, right? You, you right, yeah. Traditionally pretty writer, much. Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, Newspapers, you know, once I, once I got out of college and started working at uh, daily newspapers in Illinois, then moved over here, uh, St. Louis area, about 16 years ago. And uh, that's where I met Matt. We both worked at the, uh, you know, the Suburban Journals uh, was a popular newspaper, yeah. Suburban Weekly are, Newspaper. Are they still around? Not really. I mean, there's like shit, you know, there's like a St. Charles one that's just a throw together kind of thing. And then yeah. same with Illinois. But at the time, they used to be numerous of them and uh, pretty thriving. Yeah. And so, no, I came over here to cover uh, high school sports in West County, and uh, Matt was there at the office, IT guy. You worked in the uh, – why, why were you in the office? I fixed their computers. Just IT? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. an IT guy. So what, what, but what drew you to uh, – I mean, so it was a newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. What drew you to the newspaper? Just a job? I've always been kind of a graphic design nerd oh, okay. uh, in college, you know, putting funny photos on people's bodies and, you know, like doing memes before there were memes. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so I kind of taught myself Photoshop. I was kind of um, – and then when I was in college, I had all of my major credits done, but I had like 20 more like electives that I had to get. So I was like, I'll just do graphic design. So I got a graphic design minor. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, when I was there, I was working in uh, – at this little small print place that did their own newsletter and I learned how to set up the presses and do all the registration and all oh, the, okay. so I had that on my resume. And then when I moved, to, I actually moved to St. Louis, 2002, no job, just had a friend up here that was living. Uh, and where are you from? I'm from Eminence, Missouri, which is like a real small it's, town. Is that South? Or is that yeah. It's South of Salem. It's, it's kind of a river town. Oh, okay. Not much going on during the winter, but in the summer it's booming with people going canoeing and floating. Yeah, and a lot of rafting. Hiking, yeah, rafting, stuff like that. Yeah. So um, I moved to St. Louis, didn't have a job for several months, and the Post-Dispatch called me out of the blue and like, hey, we, we're looking for a help desk guy. So uh, so your undergrad, so you got you got the minor in graphic design. What was your major? Computer science. Computer science? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's so interesting mm -hmm. to uh, – I mean, you don't see too many. It's like it's like the left and right brain, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the creative and the uh, the technical, the analytical. The te yeah, that's the word. I'm so glad that you came <laughs> in with that save. For the folks listening, it's late right now. Late for Adam. Late Adam. for me. Is this normal for you guys? Um, this is, you know, we're shutting things down, and you know, in about an hour or so, hour and a half or so, for 10:30. You know, that's usually. Yeah. My kids go to bed at like 7:30. Yeah. And wife around eight thirty, 
and it's just my time as long as I can stay awake. <laughs> you know, and some nights it's a struggle. Yeah, man. So, well, it's, it's good to get that quiet time. I yeah. usually get that in the mornings by waking up early. Mm-hmm. But staying up late's a good way to do it too. Yeah, but yeah, Matt's always had like said a good, you know, he's he's you know, he's designed uh, you know, not only tons of stuff that you've seen on knuckle junkies but he's designed tons of fighters shirts yeah and so it's kind of neat you know like i said he's he's all he's he's always had that slightly artist brain and then also this mathematical technical kind of side of the brain yeah yeah that's cool i mean you do a lot of the shirts for the gym yeah i've done pretty much all the shirts for the yeah gym all the, the shirts last. for the gym how long four or five years oh man <laughs> i did a lot of banners too i did yeah Zach's banners, tons of banners. banners yeah you never hit me up for a banner but I always did them for uh, free, so it wasn't well, like <laughs> that's, in all fairness, I only had one banner. <laughs> I think Jim Jenkins. Right? Oh, yeah. Jan, I think Jan she, did that does, she does a great job. I'm kind of a hack. I kind of steal other people's styles. Yeah. Like when we started Knuckle Junkies, there was five of us guys. Yeah, and it's just you two now. Yeah, yeah. They so all bailed. Chris was Chris is a fantastic graphic designer, and I've kind of kind of stole his style a yeah. little bit and just kind of. Mo- well, you're learning. That's yeah. what's all, we're all stealing. There's yeah. nothing. There's nothing original. That's right. what, we always want to have the original idea, but what are the? I mean, probably somebody else already had that idea. Yeah. It's just they didn't execute on it usually. John Lennon said it best. You know, all you need is love. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. That's there's true. nothing you can see that can't be sung. Always comes back to the yeah. Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> hey, always back to the Beatles. Words of wisdom, man. That's right. That's right. All you need is love. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So you guys had like five guys. So. Chris, was he the heavier set yeah. dude with the beard? I remember him because he came into the gym a yeah. little bit and then. Yeah, he was like the graphic designer, and he's like like really really good at graphic design. Okay. And he's the one that you know Matt's referring to. He's, but he's he's kind of a quiet guy, a little bit of social anxiety. He kind of likes to stay in the behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, I remember you telling and me. And if that. you're not going to the shows, you're not getting that payback. That's what we do. We go to the shows. You have to. Yeah. You got to be in the, the juice. community. I've. I forget how long I've known people. I feel I've known you guys forever. Now you just yeah. said that you've been doing sh- shirts at the gym for five years, and I've known you guys before then through just knuckle junkies right. and just being in the scene because you guys were there. First time I saw you fight was the end of 2011 down in DeSoto at Gateway Fight League. Oh shit! You fought Jake, Jake Bueller. Bueller. Yeah. Get the shit out of Jake Bueller. Yeah, you weren't very popular down there. Either. No, <laughs> I don't. You're I don't a imagine. hometown kid, and you come in there and just like beat the brakes off of him. Yeah, I don't imagine. A lot of black people are popular now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was a crazy show, dude. Like they had some killer shows. Yeah, like I'm, I'm just joking about the racism shit. I actually grew up in that area. I'm from Potosi, but um, well, kind of. I'm half joking, right? <laughs> but uh, I just remember how poorly ran it was. One, everybody is fucking smoking inside. That's ridiculous. Why the fuck are people smoking whenever like there are people fighting? They did that at Golden Gloves one year too. Right. When they have them, they probably still do. I wouldn't imagine. I mean, down at that athletic club down, do they still let them? At buy- South Broadway. Yeah. Do they still let them smoke in there? I don't know. I haven't been to a Golden Gloves. Yeah. It's like the worst shit. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, people like performing athletically and then you just have all these assholes it's just that smoking away. It's the culture of the combat sports, you know. Is it? I think. Is it just I mean, boxing? Things- just yeah, I mean boxing, and then also you know, uh, low level Midwest MMA. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna, you know. That's true. I mean, think think where you were fighting at at that time, and that's true, man. I fought in some shitholes. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. But we didn't fight until I think 12:30. It was it was oh past midnight. There was they had some great shows. Um, Tom Baker fought uh, Tony Souders. That was one of the. That craziest. was the same card. Yeah, that that fight was just loaded with just like yeah insane fights. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did they put together some good uh, some good cards? There's been a ton of just small uh, organizations promotions just come and go. Yeah, that's really what's been the change for us in the last three to four years. When we first started, like I had, I remember going to Fight Hard on a Friday night and going to South Broadway on a Saturday night. Back to back, yeah, and we would have four to five shows a month, yeah, and we would we would we would send out an email mm. among us and be like, okay, who's covering this show? Who's covering this show? Who's and we try to spread it up because there'd There's be so many, so yeah. many shows, and that's we got amped out of trying to cover all the shows, trying to like provide the coverage for every show, so you could go. What happened here? What happened here? Yeah. What happened here? And yeah. that's that's what we tried. That was our our goal in the beginning, and yeah, now it's just like one show a month. Yeah, it's pretty much just Finney, right? Or uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, Nemesis is starting to, you yeah, know. Nemesis is doing some things yeah, right now. Yeah, Fight Hard's coming back, you know, but you're just looking for some, some consistency. Yeah. What do you guys think of Fight Hard? What do I you think it's fun. You like it? <laughs> it's a good show as far yeah. as Woo. smoke and mirrors, 
for yep. a, from from a, from a fan's perspective. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and I've always said that you know me, uh, you know Jim Jenkins that used you know used to drive Jim crazy. Right? Yeah. And it just I'd be like, man, you know, look at it from a fighter standpoint. Okay, I don't have to worry about selling tickets. Cool. Yeah. Right. Huge weight off my shoulder. Right. Um. Okay. Ev- I'm not at a casino, so everybody in my family can yeah, come. All ages. Yeah. Cool. I walk out in front of this big crowd. I look like a freaking rock star. Yeah. My Facebook you know? photos. Right. Are my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is Why it's, wouldn't? It's a good production. I don't like how I feel like they just cheapen the sport. Everything is good except when you start giving away tickets. Then nobody yeah. values tickets. True. Right. So yeah. I think that's a big reason why there's no more real, like a lot of small promotions because who's going to spend thirty dollars or forty dollars on a ticket mm-hmm. when I can, fight hard is for free. But then you get the free ones and then you got the sixty five dollar tickets. So you But oftentimes they give those away. The sixty five dollar tickets? At Fight Hard? No, I'm talking about at Shamrock. Oh at Shamrock, yeah. So they almost are t- Shamrock's diff, yeah, I know, but they're st- they've stuck around. I think they just refuse to cheapen their brand, mm-hmm. right? And that's why. And obviously, I mean, if you <laughs> Jesse Finney's like the type of guy that um, if you're competing against him, he's going to make mm-hmm. sure he wins. Yep. <laughs> and he, you know, he and he's done something which is great is that uh, I don't think the majority of the people there at Shamrock, you know, they're just there to see the Shamrock show. You know what I mean? And it's not based off the fire. No, at all. And that's where a lot of small promotions that's huge. mess up, right? Yeah. I mean, they're always banking on the fighters yeah. to bring in the crowd. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing Kenny always preached in the backstage. It's not about your record. I don't care what your record is. I could, you can't name Randy Couture's record right now. You know, mm-hmm. it's about putting on great fights. And he he didn't, you know, he made the same. He, he understood that it wasn't about who was in the cage. Yeah, it was just about the product. It's about the the show, the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. They're great on timing. I think all their shows are about three hours. I know. I think the last show I fought on, I think it went maybe like three and a half, three forty five. But they're pretty consistent. Yeah. with their entire production. He's always talk, talking about Shamrock, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's always, I've always, I've heard him say that you know, if I, you know, ten thirty main event, you know, that's what, that's yeah. the sweets, you know, that's where we're shooting for every time. And that's that's perfect, right? Yeah. Who, who who wants to be there till twelve fifteen? Yeah, and we've been in long enough to know when you've got eighteen fights on the card. Usually, <laughs> oh, <laughs> why do people do that? It, the matchmaker is just throwing everything out there to try. And yeah, get, he's, you know, he's hope he's probably banking that uh, four or five of those are gonna fall off right. yeah. more than likely. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. And you go to one thirty at night. And yeah. Yeah. Well, whenever they have that many, I think the issue comes in whenever they start just uh, putting in putting in intermissions, right? Yeah. So that way they can increase alcohol sales. Yeah, it's or all business. Whatever the case may be, it's like, come on, man. I want to fight still. Yeah. <laughs> and your people are fatigued by that. Everyone's that, tired, After man. that second intermission, they're ready to go home. And it's yeah. just like, we got three more fights. And now – Got the good fights. Yeah, now the, now supposedly is when the good and, yeah. the, and, the, and the crowds kind of fizzled out and they've lost their energy and yeah. And there's yeah. a real science to to putting certain fights on certain places. Yeah, you know you want to win that crowd back right after the intermission, so you want like a banger. Yeah, you know you, you, know, you want to kind of hide your more slower paced fights in the middle of the card, you know, and yeah. So there was a science that, you know, I used to pick Jim Jenkins' brain and try to learn everything. He's such a good matchmaker. Yeah, he was almost great. almost to a fault because. I, and I've talked to him some about this, but Jim would match so well that he thought the matches would make the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I'm putting on all these great fights. Everybody's matched really well. Surely people are going to come see right. this. But that was never the case. You know what I mean? I mean, he had some big shows. Like uh, when he was rolling, Heart, Heart St. Charles was packed wall to wall. Yeah, man. And those were. He was killing it. That's for a, a while. great venue, mm-hmm. too, because mm-hmm. it's yeah. loud and people in there. And they're not, I mean, they're rowdy, but they're. They're not like they're not crazy. Yeah, I, I worked security for not for those shows for okay. probably like two or three years. Yeah, they got you and, and Kyle doing security. I don't think I mostly <laughs> just stood around and just hung out. It yeah. was so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, you pay me hundred bucks to do this? Okay. <laughs> no, for like fight nerd, the Jim Jenkins shows were like the ones to go watch because yeah. you would see these crazy matchups. Like he brought in Will Camposano to fight Sampo. Yeah. Yes, you know, well, dude, that was a crazy yeah. show, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Sampo was beating his ass. Or the uh, Jake Collier and um, he brought in some Kelly Butterfield. Yeah, he brought in some good guys for Jake on the, yeah. well, when Jake was on uh, the on the what about when he might, What about when he matched Stump with uh, 
they didn't fight, but it, uh, oh, Stumbling Luigi. Luigi. Yeah, 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 man. Like, I mean, that's yeah. still a big matchup. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, it didn't happen, I but, I mean, he put it together. Yeah, he always put, like, crazy fights together. Oh, you yeah. Know. Um, yeah, it was fun to watch, but. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys start in Uncle Junkies when, um, I mean, they're still around, but Cage Champs, when they're, like, really in their heyday and no, still kind of. our first show was Faction that we went to. Our first Faction. Uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt Jordan. Jordan. Yep, yeah. yep. So that was over at the uh, Moolah Shrine. The Moolah Shrine, yeah. That was an amateur show. And then the next week we went to Fight Hard, and that's when it kind of was like, holy cow, this is this is insane. So, that was the show that had um, Justin Lawrence uh, fighting some dude. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's when they did the pro, the very first yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, Lance Benoist fought on that. This no, was like the third one. Yeah, oh, this okay. was like after that, yeah. Okay. But the Sharp. Uh, David Sharp. Sharp and, that guy was awesome. Uh, that's what Was that the one, uh, JW and uh, – Yep, and uh, yep. the Gator. Yeah, Rick Grindstaff. Oh, um, yeah, that was a that was a that was a that was an insane show. Hmm. But yeah, we did some cage. I mean, like we saw, you know, we were there for Steve Berger's last uh, hurrah, which that that was at Cage Champs. I remember yeah. that night. And yeah. I've been to eight, every Cage Champs except for the last one that was on my birthday. Uh, um, but every Cage Champs for for the last eight years. Really? Yeah. Oh damn, dude! Wow. So did you see me fight on Case Champs, or do you remember? No, I, that was right before I. Are you sure? Yeah. The first one. No, not, well maybe. The first pro fight was on Case Champs. Yeah, I watched that one. Uh, um, no, the first one I think I went to was in Washington, Missouri, when they they did a couple shows in Washington. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did some in Washington. That was always a good promotion. When was your pro debut? I think two thousand and uh, thirteen. Alex White was on that one too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Stump. Okay. I think you. Yeah, I think Stump was on yeah, that one as well. Yeah, those three. Okay. That was, yeah. That wasn't one of Stump's best fights. He he just out-wrestled the guy. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. It he, happens. He's such a good wrestler. Jake Collier fought that same guy like three shows – or like three months later. Yeah. And Jake – Beat the shit out of him, I Jake, remember. Jake punched the guy. The guy felt his cheek to make sure his face was still there. It was <laughs> like, uh, okay, <laughs> this Dude, is going to be a long night. Jake hit so hard. He used to come into uh, St. Charles MMA – and we'd be sparring on hard days, and he'd have, like, 12-ounce gloves. It's like, bro, come on now. You need some bigger gloves yeah. than these. You're hitting, so hard. You're hitting hard. Karma got him, though, because I was over at Burgers one night when he was up there sparring, and Dave Sharp was up there. And he his gloves were so worn out, they were, there was no padding in them left. Oh, it's just all knuckle, just basically. Not, yeah, yeah, so he was he was sparring uh, Collier, and Collier had a big fight. I forget who he was going to fight, but uh, he caught Collier pretty good. And yeah. There was some mm. – there was some – Real tension in the room from the coach. <laughs> it happens. And yeah, that was. It definitely happens, man. Sometimes things just get out of hand quick. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Man, so, Jake, Jake was one of my favorites to watch on the up and up, just watching him. Yeah. I always knew with Jake, because um, I fought him early in my career, like, I always knew it was a matter of when, not if, with him. You know what I mean? Like, some guys you just know. It's like, you will make it. It's just, mm-hmm. as long as you stay the course, you definitely will. Yeah. He's just, I don't know, he's just that that grimy fighter, man. He pulls it out. Yeah. Something about it. I don't know, like his frame or I don't know. He's just yeah. unique. He's a know? welder, so he's picking up steel all he's day long. He's super strong. Yeah. He's such a nice guy, too. I like, yeah. I like talking to Jake. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Jake. But, uh, fuck, man. Yeah, he's he's had some good fights. And when you put Andrew Sanchez into, into the, like, yeah. the mix with uh-huh. those two together, like, yeah. good stuff. I've heard some yeah. wild party times. How stories. long has – um? How long has Jake been in the UFC? He's still in the UFC, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? You guys know how long he's been in? Do you know his status? What's up with 2014? him? Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, going on five years. Yeah. But he hasn't been but super active. No, though, right? He just long, spaces kind of like Alex layoffs. White. You know. How do they let that happen? Well, because they got you under contract, so they don't care. You know. I mean, if you don't, you're not. It's not like you're out. Yeah. Fighting somebody else. They so. go to the coach and be like, "Hey, is he ready? No, he, he needs more time." And Jake's like way overweight right now. He's yeah, he's huge. He must be a heavyweight. Yeah. yeah. He's he's big and he lifts. It's easy for him to put on size. Yeah. yeah. Well, he thing. was huge before he fought. That's why that's how he got into fighting. He was just a big overweight guy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Have yeah. you trained at the pit at all? Uh, where is the pit? It's Patrick's. In, it's garage. in Cuba. It's a in it's Cuba. A, it's no. a room about the size of your living room here. No, I haven't been there. I well, I was wondering because I went down to Rosebud and trained with okay. him. Okay, but that's not the pit. Yeah. I don't know where that is. I don't know. It's who. just a room with no windows, and they have a dehumidifier in there that they empty like two or three times. Yeah, you have during to. a practice because <laughs> it's just 
Hey man, that's where it's at. That that it's like that dungeon training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the the first uh, gym of St. Charles in May. Did you guys ever visit that place? Never made it. That that's the one by Lindenwood. I'm the one on Fifth Street. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Ran- no, it's on Randolph. Oh, Randolph. Yeah, yeah, but it's just a one room place. I wouldn't imagine you guys ever saw the actual gym, but I don't know if you've ever mm-hmm. seen the building. It's not very big. Might I think I drove by it. I've seen the sign up above it. There was yeah. a the sign was up there for a long time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not very big. Good times in that place. <laughs> Good times. Yep, I've seen the old uh, team photos from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I forget how long I've known. I've already said this, but being at the gym, you know, when you're like you're a kid and you go through school, you have you know grade one, grade two, grade. Mm-hmm. So you have that marker. So you always have all these like you mm-hmm. know when things happen. But now at the gym, it's just one big fucking blur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like people just show up. Right. People fade in, fade out, and some just never go away. Mm-hmm. It's like fuck, dude. How long have I known you now? Like right. really? It's been like ten years. It's crazy stuff. <laughs> So, you guys, you came up here after school for work. Mm-hmm. Um, you're from Illinois, right? right? You yep. came over here for work. You guys met at the uh, the newspaper, the paper. Mm-hmm. and then you guys hit off a of friendship. We were just talk, talking about sports yep. and, yeah. and yeah. MMA. We both kind of got into MMA, and it, this was like when UFC on Fox was just about to happen. Oh. We thought, hey, let's ride this wave of popularity. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> what we didn't realize was that actually UFC on Fox would kill the popularity of MMA. Yeah, man. We can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but we just uh, worked together and, uh, you know, I started getting into uh, Matt's well more versed in the history of MMA and, and, and it was uh, in, into a lot longer than uh, before I started getting interested into it. I got interested in it through uh, covering wrestlers in high school, you mm. know, and. Uh, there towards my last few years of the journal really, really focused on on covering a lot of wrestling instead of basketball yeah. and then that just kind of seg- segued into MMA he used to have to beg his his editors let me write a story on this MMA fighter really like, yeah it, like he wrote one on Lance Benoit's uh Justin Lawrence nobody wants to hear that shit Brett. Yeah. Tyron, Tyron, I mean there's Tyron a, Woodley, they're yeah. like they wrestled in high school locally losers, losers yeah. all of them. <laughs> And he would like he would have to twist their arm, and then okay, okay, football season's over. It's the summer. Maybe we can fit it in. Right. And oh, it's man. just like yeah, that's how much love MMA got. Like, yeah. How much it, frust- how, Like how frustrating was that? Um, sort of frustrating, but it, I, I mean, like I got a lot. Like a, uh, I wrote an article for Justin Lawrence and on Justin Lawrence, and it was when he came back and uh, fought at Strike Force mm-hmm. here, and uh, that was an article that that uh, ran in the Suburban Journal that the Post-Dispatch picked up, which back in that day, that was like a... That's a big deal. Big deal. And the uh, I did an article on Lance Benoist, and that won me a uh, Missouri Press Association Award. Nice. Uh, the Tyron article, you know, got a bunch. So, you know, just with those three articles, I mean, it was like, boom, you know, got a huge response out of it. So, and that's what kind of kick-started. Uh, and at that point, you just established yourself as, like, the resident expert. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially with, within the paper, you know, no, right. nobody else there gave a crap, right. you know, about it. And so and here, here was this kind of, you know, niche sport that was uh, building some steam. Also, they were they were in the middle of uh, prep sports. So we kind of took the model. They had like this system they had built where they would cover. They had all these stringers going to all these sports games. Uh-huh. And yeah, it was just constant, constant prep sports, mm-hmm. you know, seven days a week. So know? we kind of took that and kind of like, let's do that. For MMA, because no one's talking. No one's talking about local fighters, right. and that's one thing that you guys were definitely the first. Yeah, that's one thing that set us apart from anybody else. Because there's already MMA Junkie and Sure Dog and MMA Weekly, and those guys do that better than anybody can do it. You yeah, know? Right. it's like why would we compete with that? Let's just focus on the local guys. Yeah, what can I control? What can who can I? Yeah, uh, you know what can I control? Who can I uh, get in with? You know, I mean. You know, the, like, like you mentioned, I mean, you know, the, there, there was, from a national standpoint, there was already well established, saturated, right, yeah. right. But you there's know. a local opportunity, regional opportunity, right? right? Mm-hmm. And, the, and the idea was, you know, hey, let's build St. Louis, maybe go to Kansas City, yeah, just, just kind of expand out that way, mm-hmm. yeah. And just, you guys still have a guy in Kansas City, right? Yeah, we have Alex. He writes. He goes to all the Shamrock shows up there. Yeah, I mean, we'd love to do more. Just manpower you know it's like yeah yeah we're, we're basically a volunteer army we we don't get really paid or anything we, right anymore, so. <laughs> tell me people ask you how much money you're making on this <laughs> all the time all the time yeah hey and I, I just kind of let it there for a while i just kind of let it go because a lot of people just thought it was my full like it was a full-time job and yeah so i was just like yeah sure yeah people yeah. have a hard time wrapping their mind around the fact that like you can just do something because you enjoy it or yeah. like you can put all this work into something and 
still produce this great end result and it might not make you a lot of money like maybe i don't know if you guys are getting any sort of ad revenue off the website or not but i mean not anymore no we used to we kind of yeah yeah even if you did you weren't getting rich off of it <laughs> no a lot of it we'd funnel right back in right it's just t-shirts right to the and business. hats that we gave out i right. mean the, the plaques, plaques the end of the year plaques I mean, stuff yeah. like that yeah, those That's are really so cool we, thank we you for that by the way gave all the money away <laughs> but how frustrating would it be if, if you put all this time volunteer and you're giving back to the community yeah and then people just criticize you for it yeah that would be frustrating <laughs> but it's not all bad criticism i mean it's no not all, but right? you know it's just kind of learn to let it slide off your yeah, back yeah you have to i think i i you know you, you hear people say um they, every, oh my haters my haters but more often than not they don't really have anybody no. hating on them it's no. all in their head but if you do get start actually getting some criticism, I mean, not everybody's going to align with what you think. So, I mean, that just shows well, at least you're, you're getting reach. Well, if you're smart, you can say, okay, maybe that's pretty valid. You know, maybe we, maybe yeah. we, maybe we're leaning this way too much. We need to pull it back to the middle. Yeah. And that's good. I think people that are smart will do that. But yeah. some people out there just like to hate, like you said. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, you want to assess and kind of see, like, is this valid or mm -hmm. not? And kind of can I actually take this and be productive and grow? Yeah, step outside, look at it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just got to check that ego at the door. Yeah, I mean, this is like it's people well, – we, we do get praise from, uh, you know, our supporters that have been longtime followers and, you know, thank you for doing that, you know, or thank you for writing them that. And we, we get a buzz from seeing people get excited about getting mentioned in an article and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But that's basically all we – you know, that and going to the shows is what we get. Out yeah, of, out of that. You guys get to go to some pretty cool shows, though, right? Like when Heck the UFC yeah. came in town, right? No, no. You didn't get to no. get, you didn't get a press pass for that. <laughs> no. Seriously? No. So that was the dream was to get established, <laughs> right? Get established in St. Louis. Yeah. And then when the UFC came to town, oh, no brainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. But no, we're mm -hmm. we're small fry. So man, I'm pretty sure they gave press passes. They gave priest. press passes. I was there. I got. I actually weasel my way in. I went along with uh, Jason from ESPN. Okay, Jason uh, Frazier. And there were like podcasts and radio stations that never talk about MMA. Yeah. But just but. I mean. But then where do they put the radio station guys? They put them in the back. But right, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're like, we weren't you guys like up top or something like that. You uh, know? So it's like. So it was kind of a that it really that really tanked morale for a long time. It, I mean, how could it not? You know what I mean? It's like this is you were positioning yourself so you could do that. I mean, you've established a legitimate brand. Like you guys are legitimate press. Mm -hmm. Why would you not get a press pass? Just makes sense to me. Right. They considered us to be more like a blog type thing. Oh, really? That's yeah. bullshit. Because we're not attached to like anything. I mean, I mean, it's, it's they're a business at the end of the day, you know, and and they're looking. To get to get yeah. more people to their show and yeah. how can they help them? But you know that said, Bellator's always treated us like VIPs. Yep. So. Bellator's great, man. Yep. They're great. Like their whole staff is cool. Like whenever I fought on the show, like it was just all awesome. Everybody was yep. great. Yeah, yeah, it's a professional dude. They do everything way better. Like they actually, you can tell that they care about their relationship with the fighters and just like the people that they mm -hmm. work with. The UFC is just like fuck you, pay me. They're a machine. <laughs> the UFC is. <laughs> UFC is a machine. They're they're emotionless. It's just. I've been saying for years the they're going to go on to the next show, on to the next show, on to the next show. They, I don't know if they will. They're I, just going through the motions. People, I watched all everybody behind the scenes, everything like that. Yeah. Um, and then they're just going through the motions. They don't. They just. They probably hate MMA. Yeah, and some of it I wonder is, um, is it the fact that the Fertitas kind of treated it almost like a club, and you know, they treated everybody so well, and then it just went to the complete opposite end of the I mean, there are a lot of bad business moves. Don't get me wrong. But like once the Fertitas exited, ex yeah, exited, then it just became such a just a black and white business, if you will. No. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that they're what do you think? They're gone uh, very corporate. Yeah, super corporate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I don't. I, I don't know if it's like I'm just trying to. I'm trying to uh, think about the about them going under. You know, I don't know. I don't know if they'll go under, but I, right. I hope they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, y you see, I th what, what what soured me on everything was the recent uh, Jones debacle. Yeah, and moving it from Vegas to uh, to California, That's some bullshit, and all that, man. and I was just like, I'm like, okay, I know you've always been in it for the money, but yeah. man, this is like the most blatant. Like, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not even gonna play a poker face. Yeah, now, and I've I've actually listened. Um, ben Greenfield talked about this um, on a recent podcast with Joe Rogan. So once you start taking steroids, even though he doesn't 
say he doesn't take them for the rest of his life, he will always produce the long term metabolite for that particular steroid. But he won't. It will, but it won't be consistent. So that's why he like passes sometimes and fails sometimes. Doesn't that seem convenient? Huh? Doesn't that seem convenient for him? <laughs> it, it's super convenient. It's super. But there's science to this. You so know, in the, in this world of microdosing, and yeah. uh, I've got uh, two brothers who are in the yeah. NFL who have access to the best. Yeah, I yeah, I think that too, right? I mean, he's definitely a cheater, right? I mean, both of his brothers got popped. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's probably been doing steroids for a really long time. But I think where the science comes in is like once you do those steroids and you stop them, you still keep those gains, like long after you do it. So, um, like on a cellular level, like you start producing like more nuclei like in the cell, and that's always there. So think of like muscle memory, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a runner. And they ran all their life, and they stopped running. But then, like, five years later, they pick it up, and it's just like riding a bike again, right? It's that muscle yeah. memory. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing if you're taking steroids, right? Even though he's not still taking them, he's still having a benefit from them still to this day. Right. Right? So that guy fucking <laughs> – what are your thoughts on John Jones, guys? Like I said, that th this last this last little issue really kind of – really soured me, you know, and, I like, I, I went through and – uh you know, I just I stopped following like a lot of MMA media yeah. and everything because I'm just like you know I'm just sick of uh, the whole I don't industry. Want, yeah, yeah, and I'm sick of it. And, you know, I don't want it in my timeline anymore. Yeah, you know, I mean, I got a couple now, but yeah, I don't still follow much true, of MMA. But, but it's just like you know, like I said, it, it was it seems you know they're like okay, we're not even hiding it anymore. You know, what I mean, it's like okay, hey, I, I don't care that you've bought tickets to come to. Hey, yeah, we're they moved an entire go. show. Yeah. Dude. yeah, I mean, why not just, just because of this guy cancel that cancel that fight or. Mm -hmm. Do something. I don't know what you gotta do, but you don't move a whole card to a state where it's gonna cost all the fighters an extra thirty percent. Right. Yeah. They just don't care. Yeah, it's uh, it's so blatant. It's so blatant. It all started with. Uh, I mean, definitely, I would say the getting rid of getting rid of sponsors. Right. I mean, you try to right. make everybody super uniform, and bland. I'm so excited for the thirty for thirty, the the rise and fall of the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dude, gonna be good. <laughs> I hope so, man. I've been saying for years they're going to, but who knows, man? They're just such a big monopoly. Now, bring bringing it back to Jake, though. Uh, oh, yeah, you talking about when those uh, when Reebok came in? You know, for a guy like Jake, that was like a sigh of relief. Yeah, because you don't have to get sponsors anymore, right? right? It's just and like it was like a pain in the ass for him to try and go ask, you know, Jerry's Garage and, and yeah. all these places for yeah. a couple he, hundred bucks when, yeah. hey, guess what? You're gonna, here's $1,500. Yeah. Cool. But if you're like Brennan Schaub and you're making right. six figures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, people don't realize the popularity. I mean, you, we're all in in the bubble, so yeah. we think M MMA is like the coolest thing. Yeah. But to the outside guy – when you're trying to sell a sponsor, and you're like, MMA, what's that? You know? Yeah, they don't it's know. It's not like UFC. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, they think it they've is. They've heard of the, yeah. Yeah. I was at, um, I don't remember, Ammo. They did a show at, at Chaffetz. No. It was a what, what uh, is uh, Mercatani's. Dave Mercatani had you a on one, charity one show. Off. Yeah, uh, it's just one show. Uh, yeah. How long? Chris was Headley this? fought Dakota Cochran. That was mm -hmm. the main event for that show. Uh, how long ago was this? Uh, 2015. Anyway, the Cardinals were in the world. Were in the playoffs, I think. Or anyway, I was at Helen Fitzgerald's. Randy Couture was doing a meet and greet there. Okay. And I was probably one of six MMA fans in the bar. And um, <laughs> they're one of the greatest yeah, fighters exactly. of all time. <laughs> they were gonna Captain America's in. Nobody gives a, gives a they shit. Were gonna, that guy. <laughs> they were He got up and and was gonna give a little, uh, hey, come check out the show. You know, I'm Randy Couture type thing. And they were like, get out of the, out of the way, Grandpa. We're trying to watch <laughs> the game. You know, he got no love. That's so crazy, man. Yeah. People are just people, though. Isn't that weird? It's like. Uh, you can meet somebody and they don't mean anything to you, but mm -hmm. another person they can just mm -hmm. meet. Oh yeah, everything. Yeah. Like whenever I met Sammy Henson for the first time, like I didn't know who he was. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then uh, people told me, "Oh man, he he did this, this, and this." And oh, that's some cool shit. Oh yeah. Like it's still he's still just a guy to me. Like he's not on this pedestal that he is for some other people. Yeah. But it's just so weird how that right. is. You know what I mean? Um, have you guys met any fighters that you're kind of like a little taken back by? Well, when we first launched, I mean, it was like. Within w whenever T Wood opened up uh, ATT Evolution, yeah. okay, and he and he brought in Randy, yeah. you know, and like Randy was one of my guys, and I mean, like so here we were, like just just months into yeah, right launch, into it. and I was just like, Psh, pff, here we go, and I, I mean, I, <laughs> like this is what I'm in it yeah, for, yeah, exactly, you know, I mean, but I remember being pretty nervous about that, you know, because we kind of uh, 
<laughs> we were we were still trying to figure everything out. Like I said, I'd, I'd never done any like on camera interviews uh, ever. Yeah, yeah. You know, now now I am. And now he's he never worked a camera before. And now he's got a camera. And so we're just like oh, bum rushing Randy. And yeah. And then the guy's like, okay, he'll you know he'll give you five minutes or or whatever. Okay, here we go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to say? Yeah, exactly. And, and since then, I've met Randy several times now, and he's yeah. like he's come to Sarah's uh, wrestling. He's in St. Louis all the time. Yeah, he's a super down to earth guy. He's just a normal dude that, mm -hmm. you know, he sort of like is expected to be someone else, you yeah. know, a certain time. So he he tries to do that, but he's pretty yeah. down to earth dude. He's just a dude. He's been yeah. hitting the head a lot. Yeah, yeah. got some cauliflower here, <laughs> and he loves the ladies. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> I have heard. I've heard he's, he's had, always got arm candy whenever I see him. Yeah, I hear he gets a little wild at the bar. Yeah. No, no stories. He's got a type too. You know, it always seems to be a, a blonde, blonde, bodacious blonde. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can get away with it, I guess. That probably that, that has had to have gotten him into some trouble. Oh heck yeah! Well, he's well, he was when he was in the middle of of Extreme Couture. When that was like the biggest gym. It was like one of the biggest training facilities mm -hmm. you could go Him to. Him and his wife had a pretty public split. Uh, Kim right. Couture, she was, she was actually Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. She was a looker. You know, man. <laughs> Live by the sword, die by the sword. <laughs> Dude, whenever, when you're at that level, you know, you got a lot of opportunity. Yeah, heck yeah. And when you're Captain America. <laughs> yeah, man. Something I've always wanted to ask, uh, you know, from a fighter standpoint, when Knuckle Junkies was coming up and all that, what was, what was kind of the thoughts? Well, I thought it was super cool that you guys were coming around. I mean, there was nothing else like that. Yeah. Um, from my perspective, um, you always, I don't know, you always just kind of focus on yourself and what you have to do. But when you guys were there after the shows, it was always cool. And then you put out articles. Like, yeah. it kind of made you feel like something. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it was It was pretty cool. Like, anytime you wrote something and, like, you're mentioned in it, I'm just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> we obviously both have spent some time on the mats at St. Charles MMA, yeah. and we've always been accused of being St. Charles MMA guys. A little biased, yeah. huh? Except when we're at St. Charles, everyone says, we're Finney's boys. Yeah, you right. know, we just we do everything <laughs> Finney wants us to do. And you it's guys so, do all the yeah. shows. <laughs> so it's like, how do you be you can't A, win. How right. do you be oh, a yeah. and B? You know? right. So we are, we've gone probably overboard sometimes trying to be neutral. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, he, he always focuses on – What's the best fight? What's the What's the biggest? Yeah, yeah. I feel like you guys have always been pretty like uh, neutral in your stances. I think so. I mean, I think I'm we've biased. we've always let the story kind of define. So I mean, if the yeah, if if you are in a main event or if you are like Julius fighting for an LFA title coming up, you know, yeah, you're going to get a story. You know what I mean? Right. And you know, us being people, sometimes you take the easy route. You know, hey, I'm at the gym doing a jitsu class. Hey, there's Charles Johnson walking right. by. I can just grab him and I'd be Real done. Quick. Yeah, I mean, that's I got the my homework you're training at. Homework right. done. Yeah, you know? homework, it's yeah. like, yeah. So yeah. sometimes that's got to be convenient, right? That yeah. access to fighters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what made you guys choose St. Charles MMA? Is it kind of proximity? Obviously, we're the best gym, but <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely proximity and yeah. Roger. I mean, you know that 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 show that I talked about it, the Scott trade that uh, Lawrence fought on, right? And um, I've been to Scott trade a bunch on press credentials uh, covering uh, big basketball games and showcases and stuff they have there. And so um, – but, but I'd, I'd never met Finney. You know, I talked to him on the phone for the uh, Lawrence article. So, so I, I opened up the door, you know, coming in downstairs to – if I, and li literally the first person I ever meet is Mike Rogers. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm looking for Jesse Finney. And, you know, he kind of points me, you know. and um, <laughs> Big old Mike. Yeah. And uh, – I don't, you know, I just got talking to him because after after that, you know, I followed up, with, you know, I talked with, you know, got to know Mike with uh, talking to his stories on Lance and Rice House and yeah. stuff like that. And the gym was literally, at that point in time, half mile from my house. Okay. Still is. But, yeah. and uh, I, remember see, I remember seeing the schedule and seeing MMA on Sundays at what time? 4.30. 4.30. You know, and me at that time, I'm like, oh, yeah, like the countdown shows and you know, I bet they're in there like swinging and hitting tires with a hammer and stuff like that. So I'm like, "Hey, Mike, uh, you know, you, you said I could come. I'm thinking about coming by that 4:30 MMA class." <laughs> like, you're just like, no, no, no. The, the jujitsu. You see the that's where, that's where <laughs> you, you come should, watch. <laughs> yeah, this is where you should go first. Yeah. So you thought you were gonna come join in that class first? Uh, yeah, it was MMA, and to me, I was like, okay, MMA, that's that stuff on Countdown, so we'll be hitting tired, you know. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll be working out real hard. <laughs> yeah, you know, and doing some stuff, and, you know, cool. He's right. like, no. Nah. I was at a show, a funny Mike story, I was at a show 
uh, about six months ago, and this fighter, he's such a meathead, like mm-hmm. young guy, young kid, you know, just super hyper, you know, yeah. just won his second pro fight, and he introduces himself to Mike. He's like, what's your name? And he, he doesn't know who Mike is. <laughs> so it kind of illustrates the what like have you done for me. How new he is, yeah. <laughs> what have you done for me lately uh, type of the sport, but also, you know. Yeah, that's true. Mike's kind of behind the scenes guy, and yeah, it, he's not as you don't see him as much as you used to. Mm-hmm. But if there's a Mount Rushmore for MMA, and you know, it'd be Mike <laughs> and T Wood and Jesse, and, you know, yeah, yeah, and I mean, probably Steve Berger. <laughs> yeah, man, people don't know, man. Mike has just done so much. I'm gonna have him on the podcast. Yeah, he said he would do. This is episode 50. He said he would do episode 50, but he was just just picking like a number that was like 10 or 12 off. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's gonna be quick, bro. You should uh, do. Uh, do one with Mike, obviously. Oh yeah. But try to get one with him and Steve. Him and Steve at I was the go- same time. That would that be, be interesting. Yeah. That would be those two. They they used to get in fight in hotel rooms like when <laughs> yeah, when, when some stories. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> wild times. Yeah. Wild times. So um. But yeah, well, let me just. When, oh yeah. Keep when, going. We, when we started, like it was said, show five shows a month. You know, four shows a month. Uh huh. There was. Eight gyms in the area that had, were putting out fighters, putting shows on. There was like Mike Green had the South South County or s- yep s- Mike Green South Side uh, Fight Club. Yep. yep. You had Burger had some gr- some guys. Uh, MCS MCS us uh, Andres. You had CMMA. Mm-hmm. CMMA had CMMA guys. was still around. He still had the Hit Squad. They were still there too. And of course you had St. Charles and Finney's. Uh, Kyle Watson had some guys coming through. Hit Squad had guys. I mean there was gyms. Yeah. Everywhere. Well, just yeah. think of the pro promotions. I mean, Rumble Time was doing pro shows. Fight Hard was doing pro shows. Yeah. Shamrock doing pro shows. Yeah. Jim would mix in a pro show here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Man, it was definitely kind of – there's a, a, a stretch there. It was kind of the heyday for yeah. the area. So 2011 to about 2013, 2014 is when it kind of hit the brakes, you know. Yeah. I mean, you probably could almost say, like, the death of Steve Smith was like – <laughs> you know that's kind of that was kind of like yeah well he was kind of probably i mean not kind of he definitely was probably the the second biggest promotion in the area yeah. right Rumble yeah, Time, oh, yeah right after finney yeah right. shamrock i mean he had deals with showtime they were doing boxing matches and all kinds of stuff. yeah, yeah. Like that. and people like to uh you know people like to talk shit on jesse you know obviously they do they love and it. uh i've had nothing know, but good experiences yeah, though well they'll be like uh you know well jesse finney's killed st louis mma it's like it wasn't – Jesse had nothing to do with – okay, at Rumble time, there was nobody in place to yeah. take over after Steve. You know, That's Steve, why Steve's passing was sudden and unexpected. Yeah. Right? But who who was, like, the vice? Who was there to pick up where things left off? Right. Gone. Not, you know, Kenny and, and Fight Hard shit the bed there for a year and a half or whatever wasn't around for months. Yeah. That had nothing – you know what I mean? I think they killed him, man. Right. So I'm telling you. I, th- I think it was – A lot of people agree hard. with you. I mean, yeah. the free tickets, the area. like you said, doesn't val- there's no value. I've seen people leave shows midway through. They don't have anything invested, so why not? Right. You know, I gotta, It's not important. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have nothing but in it. It's Those are fun shows. <laughs> they I are. I thought about super it, yeah. Nice shows. They're su- it's just – I've heard people say this. Yeah. Um, why would I go there when I got – when Fire Hard does yeah. free shows, right? right? Or – But then for a while when Fire Hard wasn't doing shows, I was just like, well, then – well, th- yeah, but they've already cheapened the value. Yeah. And then, like, whenever uh, you would tell people about a show, they would automatically assume it's Fight Hard because that's what everybody yeah. heard about. Mm-hmm. Well, they definitely had um, a demographic Yeah. that they sort of, like that St. Charles County corridor was yeah. kind of their. Well, yeah, and kind of like Shamrock in that they've got an audience. Right. You know, it, you know, it doesn't really, you know, especially yeah. especially the family. Now we'll see how things transfer over to the Chaffetz. But you know that he he kind of had that he had a family arena kind of crowd who you know like I said they weren't they weren't they don't care who's there they're loading up the van and bringing the kids and right. we're gonna go watch right guys that was punch a good business other. model right because they charge for parking mm-hmm. yeah like twenty bucks a car or something like that at Shamrock shows you had people in like cocktail clothes you know they're going for a party and then at Fight Hard you had people in like tap out shirts and yeah you know and with their kids and right you know, fanny packs and everything like that you know that yeah. was kind of different crowd. and then. Rumble time was kind of uh, in the middle of that, yeah. you know. So, yeah. And Jim, you know, Jim, <laughs> Jim, Jim drew in like the people that were in the know that wanted to see. Oh crap! These two guys are fighting. I ha- I can't miss that fight. Yeah, yeah. Jim was really cool too because you could, um, as a as a young fighter, he would match you fairly, and you could really kind of build your skill and your career. He would go um, on like in transition. Yeah. The MMA rankings and say, okay, Adams the number 185th welterweight yeah. in in the US. Yeah. 
I'm going to go find the number 170th. Right. And we're going to climb that ladder. Because I've seen him do that for guys. He would go and yeah. find these rankings and like, okay, this is going to be a good five course. He can beat that guy. And he's going to be, you know, so he w- he was yeah. he was all about moving those guys ahead. Yeah, he was very strategic with the way he did it. It was super nice. And, I mean, you could look at, I mean, I don't, you know, we'd have to look at the, uh, how many times, you know, guys like Alex and, and Jake fought for, you know. Mm-hmm. He's had a Jim, lot but, uh, of big, help, you Jim, know? so Alex White fought on Jim's card. EJ Brooks, I'm pretty sure Lance Benoist fought on there. Josh Sampo, I think Sanchez probably fought on there. Like, oh, he gave a lot of people fights. Stump. Who mm-hmm. You mentioned Lance. There's a fight that I missed. It was right before we started that I'm just – it was Eric Irvin, 18-0 and 0, as a amateur, the cage champ, middleweight champ. Oh, yeah, they're last. And Lance Benoist, 19-0. <laughs> and 0, <laughs> Yeah. Uh so they're 18 0 and 19 0, like welterweight champion. Like right gonna, be- oh, wow. Yeah, right before they go pro. Yeah, they're going to meet at Cage Champs. And it was just like, I mean, yeah. you probably That'd couldn't find cool. two better amateurs in the Midwest. Yeah. You know? yeah, dude, Cage Champs did that quite a few times. I fought on a card with Lance, and um, he fought Quarter Stit. Yeah. Yep. And that's, it, dude, that whole place was just crazy <laughs> packed and crowded. Have and you that ever was a huge fight. Ever seen Lance's like highlight video of like his first fight? Five amateur fights, there no. were, or four, five, first five pro fights are just like no. It's like a it's like a like a crime scene. Really? <laughs> when Lance was an amateur, I don't I think it was a case champ show, and you maybe you've heard the story, but he um he 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 got to the fight. They already weighed in the day before. They're they're back there warming up. He's hitting pads, just fucking just smacking pads, whack whack whack. The dude he's supposed to fight sees Lance hitting pads. And leaves the show. <laughs> Dead ass. He's like, I don't want to fight that guy. He just left. Lance was a killer, man. Well, what made him unique or special? Or so Lance, man, I think it's just his mind. I mean, he's he had great physical uh, talents. I mean, he's his hips were his. Yeah, he had very flexible hips. I mean, it was very easy for him to kick your head. But uh, <laughs> he just. Uh, just his mind, man. Yeah. He was just a fucking killer. He's mean. Like. He's super mean, and he just wanted to hurt people. Yeah. He was still young and full of piss of vinegar. I mean, I think he didn't go pro until he was 21. I don't think Mike would let him go pro until he was 21. And, uh, I mean, shortly after he was pro, he went to the UFC. He, right. yeah, that's, that was – you were unheard of to get signed that you're 5-0 and or 6-0. and you yeah, know, I mean, you had to have like a. He was just that fucking yeah. good. I remember one time at the old gym, I went in there. It was me, Lance Benoist, and Tyron Woodley, just us three in there sparring. I got my ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to kind of tag on that uh, story you told about Lance hitting the pads, um, Chris and Scott, two of our knuckle chunkies guys, back in the day, they were over in Belleville. Back in Belleville, had shows at the Fisher Ballroom, I don't know, Battle of the I, Ballroom. I've never been there, no. Um, and Sanchez was over there. That's kind of where he cut his teeth. Okay. And he was at McKendry and kind of. Yeah, that's where he lived, you know. Yeah. That. They would just find bums for him to fight. And we had seen him fight a couple times, and we knew what we had with Sanchez. Like, he was blue chip prospect. He's. Oh, yeah. And anyway. National champion. Chris and Scott are in the back locker room, uh, you know, talking to Sanchez, you know, trying to get some quotes from him, you know. And then his part, his guy he was fighting saw that. Put his gear in the back, hit, left. hit the road, and that's when we got banned from the from the locker rooms over at at Bell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys ruined the whole yeah. Fucking yeah. fight card. Yeah. Yeah, screw that. That's so funny. They man. had some, they had some questionable matchmaking. They're like, oh yeah, you know, how much you wear right now? This is at the show. Oh, this is good not- enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you look like you're 150. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had some questionable matchmaking over there. That happens a lot, man. I um I went to college with this guy. Man, what's his name? Jason Moreno was his name. He wrestled at Lindenwood. And um this is back before I started fighting. Like Josh Sample was just getting into fighting. I think he kinda they were doing some MMA fights. And uh there was a fight that fell through and they just went to the crowd and just who wants to fight? So Moreno, who's I mean, a uh, uh, high level wrestler, wrestled at Lindenwood, fucking Puts down his beer and like <laughs> goes in there and fucking no fights. blood work no no nope. <laughs> takes the guy it, you didn't have to have blood work as an amateur right for the longest yeah. time he uh, just took him down hammer fisted him apparently <laughs> and won the fight but it's like what we're we're pulling people out the crowd right, <laughs> right yeah. now like seriously yeah. I wonder how many times that's happened I probably mean, yeah probably yeah tons you know well I mean try to uh, hard hard to uh, 
vouch for the legit legitimacy of the sport you know when you're like uh yeah hey anybody want to well, happened a lot back in the day i don't want to i don't want to get anybody in trouble but um patrick's my buddy patrick smith at cage champs yeah. and about a year and a half ago they pulled a kid out in the parking lot <laughs> yeah. it was k1 i think so i heard about that yeah. it was k1 he fought uh one of our guys oh did he clayton 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 yeah. oh and not clayton out <laughs> yeah yeah they called it it's so, so he bad. was having a beer in the parking lot. So they were like, oh, this guy thought he's the natural. So he comes back, like, the next show and just get, gets hammered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, little did he know, like, he fought a guy who was, like, strung out on drugs. Yeah. Just not in a good place in not his in life. Not in a good place, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, but, yeah, and so it happened still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Long story short. Yeah, man. But that was that was kickboxing. That's a little bit different, you it's know. Little, I mean, it's still combat sports, yeah. but, yeah, still a little bit. I mean, I don't know. Either way. Probably still not the best look. Still not the best look. So you guys had five people starting out, right? You had yeah. – uh, we mentioned three or four of them. What happened to Debo? What happened to that guy? So he wasn't one of the original ones. He's oh, a he guy, wasn't? He, he came guy, in later. He yeah. He came in through the fight hard. He was a buddy. He's buddies with Kenny. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, he he was just like, hey, I'll help you guys out. And we yeah. were like, okay. Because yeah, <laughs> we're like, and we can't pay you. And he's like, okay. That's fine. <laughs> and I, yeah. so I, he, I didn't care much for being in front of the camera anyway, and that's what he was all about. He's all about it. Yeah. yeah. He so. was like into building his brand, and he's a great guy. And yeah. people – flock to him i've had i've so, been at shows and people push me out of the way to talk to him about <laughs> knuckle junkies and really I'm like, okay <laughs> i don't care though I mean, yeah. like, whatever i mean you're, you're the man behind the scenes That's right. so. yeah well he's just such a big presence right yeah he's a big yeah was he like six five or something every bit yeah, yeah he's a big dude mm-hmm. it made it difficult when he would interview like johnny o- danny dan o'connor well because dan's the- at his dick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was a lit- so me being the cameraman i have to like yeah. figure out how do i get this angle so yeah. that debo doesn't look like yeah you know. yeah he's like 10 feet tall and and fucking johnny yeah. irish is like three but i mean johnny irish gave us some of the best backstage interviews some of the best uh oh, yeah like he's one of the most colorful guy he community needs somebody like that yeah to be, to bring some. He's entertaining. To bring mm-hmm. some entertainment, yeah. Yeah, he's super entertaining. He had, he, now, speaking of banners, he had some of the best banners. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Well, he would always have Jan do them. Yeah. Um, but the best one was the, the remake of The Snatch. Right. You know, he yeah. had him in the corner and, and Steve, you know, that was so good. Yeah, it was good. We talked about that on the podcast. Oh, yeah. In the video, like, I um, I put it up so people could see it. Yeah. 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 It's so good. I might do it on this one. I, I won't. <laughs> I might. Yeah. But yeah, Jan, she had, she had a style to her banners. All her banners looked really. She did Kirk's banner, the really cool one. They mm-hmm. had like the cage, uh, yeah. on there. A lot of Zach's banners. Chris, actually, our Chris guy, he did the, uh, the banner where uh, Freeman is like sitting like this. Yeah, it's that like was the him. Godfather. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, man, I wonder if Freeman's gonna get back in there. Hard to say. It's hard to say when stuff. I, I kind of thought he was almost gone before, and then he came yeah. back. Yeah, and he came back. Yeah. It was a big <laughs> opportunity. I thought the uh, the fight with what's his name Pico. Pico was this. Like, I, I mean, I don't uh, much hype around this guy. I you mean, know, if you want to take momentum, like that's the time to ride with the momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I thought I didn't. I didn't think Zach was going to win that just because it was like surely Bellator knows what they're doing, right? <laughs> I don't think they obviously didn't. They obviously dude. didn't. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad matchup. Um, so yeah, I don't man, but there there was so much, uh, and still is so much talk and hype around Pico. You know, I mean, I was like people. worried. I was like, oh man, is that going to get his face yeah that's boxed th- off or what? You yeah. know what I mean? Well, Pico's training with I mean a, a lot of high level killers, yeah. right? And he's been fucking smashing fools. I yeah. know he just got beat pretty bad though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's like he didn't have any amateur fights, so he doesn't. Kn- he makes the mistakes. That people that don't have enough fights yeah, make, right, yeah. you know, yeah. you get over aggressive, you overextend, right? And when you're going against a seasoned guy, yeah, they can. Well, TJ, Dill- I saw just a brief clip. Uh, TJ Dillashaw was talking about that with, with Rogan. He was saying that Pico, and then like he cut out at the end of the clip, but it was saying like he's like uh, the live by the sword, die by the sword type of guy. Like yeah. he's just fucking trying to take your head off, yeah, and mm-hmm. be exciting as possible, right? But like, man. It's not sustainable. But, yeah, I thought that would probably be – Zach could get that awesome payday, good for him. And then – Yeah. Because, you, know, you know, he's got a successful career and a family and everything like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's why I was wondering if he's if he's going to get back in there. But then now. that, like, lit the spark under him. It was like, you yeah. know, let's go. He was rolling jiu-jitsu yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, he was he's in there. He's got some nasty – 
Dude, his jits is so good. Freeman is a gamer, man. I can't wait yeah. to get him on the podcast. Um, but he is just such a gamer. He goes in there and just performs. I love guys like that. And I, I always uh, thought, uh, you know, Stump was one of those guys that, you know, when the house lights come on and the crowds, yeah, the crowd, you know, yeah, they turn up. Yeah, you know? it's game time. And yeah, he, he's an awesome to roll with too because he is so gentle to people that are way below his skill level. Freeman or Stump? Freeman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Like, I never felt like I was getting ready to get my arm ripped off like I do sometimes with certain yeah. people, you know. Yeah, that's so important. I always pride myself to be one of the safest guys in the gym to roll with. Yeah. Because some people just are not safe. Yeah, you're a tough matchup for us short people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I try to make it difficult for most people. I was in Chicago last weekend, and um, do you guys know Jake Bright? You guys yeah, know? oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, I stayed with him and his wife, Brooke, and then uh, on Saturday morning we went to his – his new school and we rolled jujitsu. So the owners of the school, um, one of it's a husband and wife and the husband, he's the head ref for IBJJF. Oh wow. Yeah. For the whole organization. And, um, I got in trouble twice while we were in there rolling. So we were doing like a, like a guard pass drill, right? So you have to pass the guard and then you like restart. And, um, I was going for a knee slice and then I, he stopped it. So then I came back around the other way to, to, Almost like a smash pass, kind of. You mm. kind of do a big back step, but um, you can also catch a knee bar there. Mm. So, like, I'm stepping over and, like, I touch the knee bar, and I'm not going to go for it because, I mean, we're not supposed to. And uh, he yells at me immediately. Like, he's fucking on it. He's like, <laughs> no, Adam, we don't touch that. Like, because we're both, we're both purple belts. And, like, he's like, oh, you can't do that. You can yeah. do that at the brown belt uh -huh. level. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And then the next time I'm going with the blue belt. And we're stuck in this 50-50 position, so I had this lock on his leg. And I couldn't get a straight ankle, but, like, I, I, did, well, I didn't lock it up, but I did touch a heel <laughs> hook. And he yelled at me immediately. Man, like, didn't give me any – on you. No flack. In all fairness, I totally get it, right, because safety first. He doesn't know me. How many people walk yeah. in off the gym – I mean, walking off the street into a gym and hurt somebody. Or, right. you know, ego gets in the way, and you know what I mean? Usually by purple belt, though, you've kind of had some yeah. uh, some instruction being into you. At, I mean. Yeah. He was like, uh, well, I think it was less about – some about me, right? But it was also that he is a blue belt, and that's not a part of his game. So right. don't do it to him, right? Uh -oh. and, and the same thing with the other guy. Like, brown belt and up can do knee bars, so don't do a knee bar. He's so strict about IBJJF, and then he said something to the effect to the effect of um, uh, he mentioned like that, that's not the level, so don't do it. And then um, like nobody's in here, like nobody in here is a professional athlete, so there's no need to do that. And he didn't say that because he knew like I fought professionally. He was just saying like there's no right. reason to do it. So I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> I mean, I fought for like five or six years professionally, so it's just habit, man. Right. And like again, he didn't know that I'm like a safe person. Well, him being an IBJJF ref, does um, do all the Brazilians in the class get the f first round by? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Maybe. There's only one Brazilian. This kid's name, uh, I think, Vic. Vic or Vinny? I'm fucking it up. I wish I. Would. But he's uh, he's a young, like 21 year old dude, straight from Brazil. Oh wow. Savage purple belt. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Speaking of that, yeah, that's fucked up how they do that. <sighs> <sighs> Man, worlds. I always like to see the draw when the world's you know and yeah and it's i just wish they would just run it just a little bit more consistently so this yeah this past year i had five minutes in between my first and second round the guy i went with second round had to buy the first round and what made me mad was or what frustrated me in the moment was uh we have a teammate from uh team Vagi, wisconsin and he was in the same bracket as me but on the other side and he had to buy the first round now granted I mean, he did have a buy the first round, so he could still have been waiting for that. But I, I just got done with mine, and he's still, like, back there kind of just, like, chilling and waiting. So I'm just like, man, surely I have 10, 15 minutes. Right. At least 15, maybe 30 if I'm lucky. I had five. Just wasn't. And then the night before, um, one of uh, Heath Pedigo's guys, uh, Rondo Moss, I think it's Moss's last name, Rondo, he won Worlds at Blue Belt. And uh, he had probably two hours between one of his matches. So it's just, like, so inconsistent yeah. how they're running that. I had 80 people in my bracket. You're going to tell me there's not some other fucking matches that you can do until I – you know what I mean? Wow. Well, yeah, well I mean, it happens at all levels. We, yeah. Uh, one of the guys that I trained with at St. Charles, Jim, did, he did the Fuji last year. Yeah. He shows up at 8 a.m. Guess when he hit the mat? 8.05. 3 p.m. 
<laughs> he sat around in his gi <laughs> from left. 8 a.m. Yeah. to 3 p.m. <laughs> That's hilarious. But um, does IBJJF have a new thing where you have to be a member now? You have to. So you have to have membership, and I think it used to be you had to be uh, like a, only – Browns and Blacks had to pay for membership. And then I think like a year or two ago, they expanded that to uh, to Purple Belts. So I wasn't very happy when I had to pay for that last uh-huh. year. Yeah. And then now I think it's everybody. Every belt has to. I'm kind of conflicted about that, especially because I personally am kind of – one, I'm not actually – I'm kind of actually – I think I'm gravitating like out of competition entirely. But if I do compete, I like the submission only better. Like the yeah. EBI ruling, um, I mean, I don't know, 10 minutes, 8-minute matches – but the whole advantages and the points and just – I just don't like it. Well, the goal is to get high enough where you get invited to the events, right, where you don't have to – Get invites? Yeah. Yeah, invites are cool. I guess also sponsors would help pay for your entrance fee to events and stuff like that because – Yeah, you could do that. Some of those events are like – what? what's IBJJF for like Chicago? Um, They're actually pretty reasonable. I think what gets expi- – I mean, I think for Worlds, I think I spent like 125 bucks or $120. That's for two events? No, just the one. Oh. Just the one. Yeah, I don't know how much it is for one division at, like, IBJJF Chicago. I think it's usually, like, $110 or something like that. That's or one losing and you're out, right? One loss and you're out? Yeah. Yeah. I could be wrong what on those What about some of those though. submission only? Are those only invites only, or can are those? Most of those are um, – I think it just depends on the circuit. So, like, EBI – I'm pretty sure that's all invite only, right? right? But then there's um, there is a submission, like a submission challenge or mm-hmm. submi- I don't know, like a circuit, and then you mm-hmm. just sign up for that. Okay. So you're seeing more and more circuits like Naga and different things. Fuji, yeah, yeah Fuji, and some of them are just submission only based. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not super versed on the jujitsu competition scene. Last year was my first year ever competing in jujitsu. Really? Like on like an actual tournament. I never wanted to spend the money. I was so busy right. doing MMA and whatnot. And then locally, especially whenever I started, Naga was the big show in town. Yeah. yeah. Get your katana. Yeah, yeah. Go get a <laughs> cool ass sword, and then. Uh, but you, you most likely would end up going against somebody from the gym. So it's like, yeah. why am I going to pay for this money for that? These tournaments still kind of got that kind of traditional martial arts stink on it too a little bit you know what like do you mean? like traditional martial arts from like the 80s you know has a little bit of a carnival carny kind of a shyster mm. you know there's just a little bit of uh you know it's more about moving product and selling you know yeah. getting memberships and stuff like that you know and everybody getting a medal and yeah yeah and Kind of by walking away happy with it's a, a little t-shirt. factory system. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think like, especially Naga. I mean, some of those are like. I was not impressed with the last Naga. I'll actually never take my son to another Naga ever yeah. again. I thought the rest were actually not that good. And um, I thought most of the staff was really rude. Um, like, you just walk in and, like, my fucking son's weighing in and my daughter's weighing in. And, like, they act like you're doing something wrong. <laughs> like, you're trying – uh, you registered them for like this weight class, and now they're stepping on the scale, and maybe they're like two or three pounds difference or something. Right. And they're looking at you all funny or something, like you're trying to get over on them or something. I just, I can just vividly remember walking yeah. through the door and not getting good vibes. And I, I'm big on like the internet. Yeah. But they've probably people. seen it all, though. People trying to like. That's cool, but you don't have to be a dick. Yeah. You can yeah. be friendly. Yeah, but it would co- it would make you a little jaded though when you're. I mean, they're in every city. Yeah. And they've got parents that are trying to. Yeah, you know it could, but I mean, if you're gonna run, if you're gonna be in the business, yeah, then and especially dealing with a lot of kids, yeah, and for parents and yeah, so. I mean, at least put a fucking smile right. on your face when people are registering sure. or something. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've I've dealt with other um, uh, other circuits and they weren't nearly as bad as that one. I just didn't like that one. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that one. Have you done Fuji? Yeah, Fuji's great. I love Fuji. I really do. I um I went to Columbia, Missouri, and both AJ and I, uh, my son, we got to both compete on that tournament. Oh, that's cool. So it was super cool, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how many opportunities yeah. you get to compete with your kids. Me and my daughter did that several years ago. Yeah. Are you guys going to do this upcoming Fuji? No. 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 Fucking I don't get to train enough, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Where have you guys been? I'm training, but I just, I I'm just kind of that whole, you know, $90 and maybe get two matches and – Maybe, you know, I'm also a coward, so. And, <laughs> well, also, yeah. if you're going to get hurt. It's only $75, it, though, for one division. Yeah? It was. It's, it's closed now. It's too late. You're more likely to get hurt at a tournament than, you know, than, you know, tra- train the same people you know that are safe. And, yeah. And 
I do it just because it's fun and yeah. Not it's not about the competition for yeah. everybody. It's really not. That's that's almost a drawback to our school is that competitions weighed pretty heavily. Yeah. It's I don't especially like it. for any kind of uh, advancement. Yeah, and that's what really gets me. I mean, I I kind of get it. Right. And I kind of get where it came from. I get it. Well, I I don't think it's as bad as Rodrigo's though, because my friend Chris actually left Rodrigo's recently because he just always. Really? Getting pushed to compete. And, and yeah. he's got four daughters, and he's got, like, yeah full-time career, and his wife works full-time, and it's just like... Yeah. I Mike's know. pretty good about not pushing people to compete. Yeah, I've no. never felt, like, no. yeah. twist of my arm. Yeah, but it's almost kind of, like, understood, like, if you want to advance faster, mm-hmm. then you have to compete. But it's like, well, how much faster is faster? Like, does that mean the slow is going to be that much fucking slower? It's always <laughs> been a marathon for me. I've always just been like, I'm just going to keep doing it, and yeah. I'm going to try to be more consistent and try to be safer so yeah. that I can keep doing it yeah. and not miss any. Yeah. And just go That's what it's about, too. Yeah. They say train without expectations, and I get that to a degree, but to say that you don't want that next belt or you don't want that next promotion, you're just fucking lying. Right, You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's why you get so happy uh-huh. when you get it. Yeah. You get... You get happy, but then when you're that four stripe white belt and you get that call, <laughs> that, that, hey, you're you're up. <laughs> the next test is uh, in March. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or you can go to a school that doesn't do tests. Yeah, those are lame though. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I know. It seems like the more you train, the more you concern you get concerned about that, you know, next stripe or that next, you know. Yeah, yeah. I tried. And then to like I, I took I, I took like a pretty big break over the holidays, and uh, then get, kind of getting back into is it. like. Okay, those expectations I kind of you know because I've been training harder you know but I'm like man what's gonna you right. know and then you kind of take a break and then you come back and it's like I'm not even thinking about a stripe or you right know, I'm just glad to be back and yeah just to be moving around yeah, yeah. everybody and yeah. I, I work you know you take three or four weeks off and it kind of changes the whole three or four weeks feels like an eternity it does it's like I've been gone for a year uh-huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> how do you guys I do miss this? me you how know? do I do this thing yeah. I work with a girl from Gracie Baja yeah. And she's like, yeah, I've been going for, like, three months. Get my third stripe. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> how many, you know, you've been doing it for, like, four years. How long? How many stripes you got? <laughs> I'm got I got one. <laughs> dude. It's so, dude, I've been – I was a blue belt for four years. This will be my fourth year on my purple belt. In all fairness, the first year I was completely injured, right? Right. But, I mean, I've been hot and heavy for the past two years. Yeah, but right? you were more in MMA training than, like, right. pure – I mean – yeah, I don't know. You, you, probably, you weren't you're putting on the gear too there. much, uh, the gi too much during your fighting heydays, especially like 2015 when you were like really fighting a lot. No, I mean I would try to get in a gi class like once a week if I could. It's just it's so hard, I, especially with the the schedule at the gym. So it's like mm-hmm. you know 4:30 on like a Wednesday, say right. 4:30 MMA class, and then I got to go straight into jujitsu afterwards. Right. And oftentimes I would do that, especially in the beginning when you start training. Because you're so anti, you just want to be there all the time. Yeah. yeah. But dude, after you, I, I just fucking woke up at you know five thirty, six o'clock, and I already ran. And, mm-hmm. and now I just mm-hmm. did MMA. I don't want to fucking stay and, ju- and do. Uh, gi jujitsu. Yeah, gi jujitsu. Like I don't want to do that right now. Especially because you're thinking so much about your fight and everything's about the fight. And yeah, and like, like how much, like how much better am I really getting right now? Like I'm exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can maybe uh, tighten up some techniques, but I'm not mentally there anyway. Right. So is it just a waste of time? Yeah, if you're preparing for a fight, I mean, there's so much like jiu jitsu that it's not going to be applicable, right? Dude, the you gi will sweat. make you better with no gi, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Hmm. I don't know why. It just does. But it if you does. never it's do no gi, It though. just gives you a deeper level of understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. For so, cuz no gi won't make you better for gi, but gi will make you better for no gi without a doubt. Yeah. I'm a, I'm only gi and I hate no gi and cuz I just so rely on my grips and yeah. cheats and the lapels and the, Yeah. So. Yeah, I think uh like the no gi grips just kind of came from wrestling for right. me. It's just natural grab wrist and different things, mm-hmm. but it comes in handy. Yeah. It comes in handy. So how does it make I mean, uh, how how does that translate or how does that the gi make the no gi better, but I not vice versa. Because um, obviously you don't you don't get reliant on the on you the You can't slow down in no gi. You, you can't slow down in no gi, but <sighs> you get a deeper understanding of jujitsu by using. So in theory, whatever you do in gi should be able to work in no gi, right? right? Um, minus certain grips, but in gi, I don't know what it is, but there's certain controls, and then. You just you maybe it's because you can 
use the gi to slow the game down mm-hmm. and start thinking through jujitsu, and then that allows you to build your game, and then it becomes easier to transfer over to no gi. And then also with no gi, you can get away with some sloppy shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. You'll you'll see some guys who have never put on a gi. And like they've only trained no gi right their whole life, and I can think of a few different guys off the top of my head. But they just they figure out ju- they they figure out submissions that work. They figure out things that just work. But there's no real basis in jujitsu on that. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. this is like halfway jujitsu, and we just figured it out. And it works for MMA, uh-huh. and it works for no gi, but it's not real good jujitsu. Right. That reminds me, like my one of my favorite things. I'm being sarcastic. One of my <laughs> least favorite things. <laughs> hey, Mike's like, hey, Matt, work with this new guy. He's the first day on the mat. You know, come in here. And right off the bat, blast double. He's got the gnarled ears, you know. <laughs> yeah. First day on the mat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've got a mental block when it comes to the to the young wrestler in jiu-jitsu class. Yeah. They're just so hard to deal with, oh man. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's like, I just want to fuck with this, you know. Fucking head right underneath my chin, you know, grind yeah. and grind and grind, you know. Yeah, I just cement them. I mean, I, I re- real quick. I don't have that. I don't have that in my pocket. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I respect the uh, the sport so much, you know. And I, I was, uh, it was just like this past winter. I was um, flipping around on the channels, and I hadn't watched amateur wrestling in a long time. And uh, I caught uh, Ohio State versus Penn State, and just watching that after being on the jujitsu match for years on end, you know, it's like. Holy cow! This, yeah. you know, I mean, zero chill. These guys have. I mean, everything is. Oh yeah, go go go! Oh, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. if I'm grabbing your elbow, it's, you know, everything is just. Yeah, that's intense. how I take advantage of wrestlers when they start because everything is going forward. It's all pressure. Yeah, and it's all pressure forward, which is important because you can put pressure on somebody without putting pressure going forward, and, and they lead with their head. So yeah. you can almost always get a sweep or catch them in a triangle, almost always. Because they're just driving with their head. I used to love doing that when we were at the journals. He, w- he would be studying amateur wrestling photos. <laughs> and I'd be like, should I come back at another? another this is a bad time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like close-ups of the like guys in those so wrestling <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Not safe for work. No. <laughs> well, gents, let's wrap this up. We done? It's uh, been a little over an hour. Okay. Yeah. It's been a great conversation. Okay. Yeah, time yeah. has been flying. <laughs> I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Okay. Or what are you going to ask me? Just I thought if you had any, any other last uh, nothing, closing concerns. Nothing We're used to asking the questions. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is my show, guys. <laughs> That's right. No, yeah. I'm going to turn the floor over to you. So anything you guys want to plug, promo, um, it's up to you. Anything. Plug the site. I mean, knucklejunkies.com, obviously, uh, on Twitter, you know, at knucklejunkies. I have my uh, my own Twitter. I do uh, some MMA stuff on there, at, you know, at Brett Auten. And then, of course, you know, we got the – Pretty big on Facebook, and mm-hmm. I'll put all this in the in the show notes too. Is Twitter the best way? Like for is me that, personally, that's sure. your better. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yep. Just Matt. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't really have anything to plug. Okay. You know? All right. That's if you got any. Uh, My New Year's resolution is to stop doing stuff for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna link your Facebook, and then people are just gonna get all these random. Yeah. Ads. Yeah. I'm, I don't add anybody. <laughs> 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 I still haven't added Heath Pedigo, and he's still salty about it. Like, he got ticked. Yeah. You're consciously <laughs> doing it now. I, yeah. At this point, I can't. You know. He's gone too far. Yeah. This is like. It's just like I don't. If I haven't like. I don't know. If I haven't been in your guard or if I, <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't talk to you on a daily basis. Like yeah. there's no point. There's no like point. Yeah. That's yeah. pretending to be friends yeah. online. <laughs> That's how you build that network. I have friends on social I've never met. Right. Isn't that yeah. weird? That's the weirdest shit. Well, it's also probably, you know, your, some of your podcast guests you've all, you've probably met through. Yeah, social right. It's it's almost yeah. A lot of my podcasts, not a lot, but yeah, for sure. Especially when I go to a new city, right? I just try to connect with somebody. Yeah, and, and uh, it's it's cool. It uh, helps grow the network. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say like people talk to you that you don't know. I'm like I'm just used to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with MMA, people just come up and randomly talk right. to you like they know yeah. you. Do you guys have that happen to you where people come up? A little bit, a little bit, yeah. Or yeah, you know, or like a fighter, like they saw you, say, hey, what's yeah, up, Brad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or you know. Get shout outs sometimes that, hey, hey, you know, they're just like point, you know, fans are <laughs> knuckle junkies, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, fellas. Awesome, man. Thanks for having us. I think uh, I'm really enjoying uh, it's you cathartic. Know, what, you, what you're doing here, you know, cranking out the uh, podcast, and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on you and I'm trying to follow and uh, it's all about like having fun with it. I'm trying, man. I'm having a good time. Yeah, you're yeah. getting better at it. 
Slowly but surely, yeah. just put it in the wraps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when I started with Knuckle Chunkies, I had no video experience, no journalism experience. Like, my my only writing, I got a C-plus in creative writing in college. And, yeah. And, and then I basically just followed his lead, and he yeah. he showed me yeah. the ropes. So. That's the cool thing, right? You don't need you permission. You learn by doing. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and just jump in and do it, you know? Like, like I said before, I'd never interviewed anybody on camera and here we go kind of a thing. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen it. And that so. is really difficult. <laughs> it is really difficult. <laughs> Interviewing to, people? To think on your feet oh, in yeah. front of a camera. Oh, yeah. And the pressure comes ask on. questions. Oh, yeah. And those guys that do it all the time have just had muscle memory, like you said. They just, they know what questions. Are. And you've gotten really good at it. Yeah. Know? So Especially when fighters don't give you good responses, right? Or they're just, they're not very talkative. You're right. I but mean, after a win, I imagine they are. Right, exactly. So, l- l- thankfully, you know, a lot of times, most, most of the guys we're interviewing are, are, uh, are, they've just won and they're pretty pumped and ready, oh, to, yeah. ready yeah. to talk about it, you know? Yeah. Don't yeah. make the mistake of interviewing the person who lost the fight. Never do that. That's the only time they, the UFC the, does the that. Only, well, the only time we've done that, uh, the only loser of Rob a fight Washington, right? was Rob Washington after the Rob Washington Zach Freeman fight. Freeman, that was a hell of a fight. Yeah, we're like, I gotta at least get his, you know, yeah. get his take on it because it was. I mean, and you guys wrote a really nice piece building up to that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You have to do a part, was, part two of this, and we'll just go through some of the classic fights like Freeman and Washington, hell yeah, yeah. and you know. Uh, Sal Woods and there's been whoever. a lot of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sal Woods and everybody. Jared Gross, like they, that first fight was like yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, you know, Stump had some great yeah. fights. He fought Kane Royer down in yeah in uh, Stratford, and that was like, dude, St. Louis has really good MMA. People just don't know. It was man, you know, there like when we first launched, you know, twenty. 2012, and then you know, around 2013, 2014. I mean, it was there were six guys in the UFC from St. Louis. Six guys in the UFC had a, you know guys like you and you know on the come up and yeah a lot of and good Hugh guys and you know and Sanchez. You guys were all ones come you know filling in the shoes and yeah. Now it's just kind of been a well. Yeah. There was that first wave of like <laughs> yeah. Lance and T Wood, and then there was that second wave of like Collier and yeah. Alex, Alex and EJ Brooks. Yeah. EJ. Yeah, that we third wave him. never yeah. really came. I mean. Yeah, it just kind of faded. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if that's kind of uh, in combination with like the the decline in the amateur scene. There, well, yeah, it's like I mean, first of all, you know, MMA training is not easy. That's what I've always kind of chalked it up to is like, who's gonna do it? People, they finally People started. started <laughs> they started really realize how much it took, you know, and how tough it was. And you just just because you were maybe a decent athlete and played some, you know, mid level college, you can't just segue your way into this. You yeah, know, cage fighting. It's a lot and of work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the accessibility where, where, where we used to probably in 2008, let's say, or 9 or 10, if you were a, you used know, a, a, a Division one AA even football player. So, you know, I mean, yeah. if you're that kind of athlete, you could maybe come over here and do some success, but it's it changed so quickly. Yeah. Well, there's not as many gyms out there, like, bringing for buddies in to come get, hit the mats, stuff like that. There's not, en- there's not as many promoters out there trying to dig up guys. Like, hey, this guy was a wrestler. Let's see if he – Wants to maybe try to fight once, you know. Yeah. So there's not a, both of those things aren't happening right now because there's only four, five gyms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When there used to be like twelve, there's no only only two promotions when there used to be ten. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so many. It's, yeah. So it's just quantity of scale. I mean, there's just. That's true. Yeah, man. Um, We're in interesting times. Yeah, and yeah. then and like I said, UFC on on TV every week. Why would you? Yeah, it's a little oversaturated. You know? I would agree. There's just so many shows. All the time. I mean, as the UFC's grown, they put shows on all over the world right. constantly. I mean, their r- roster is huge. Yeah, there's more. There's more players uh, or more more uh, UFC fighters than our players in the NBA. Really? Yeah, which shouldn't be that. That's interesting. There's yeah. not near that. There's not near enough. Uh, yeah, it used to be, man. Like the UFC was. Oh, you were, you you made it to the UFC. Like right. that's a big. I've trained with so many people who fought in the UFC. They've, they've turned into, like, a meat grinder. They yeah. bring guys in. They'll it's get not two that fights hard to, yeah. to do anymore. Right. Well, it is in the, in the but in the grand sense. But, you know what I mean? Like, UFC fighters are a dime a dozen yeah. is my point. What also will happen is you have this guy in your gym who is just, like, the guy. He's, like, the guy. Yeah. And he climbs the ladder. And, he, and you see him get to the UFC, and you see him just get smoked by just <laughs> – yeah, average UFC guy. Yeah, and it's just like you just realize there's levels to this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm never gonna get to that level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. I always wonder about those people who clearly have to know they'll never make it to that level. 
but they just keep doing it. Yeah, I guess they they do it for other reasons, you know. Yeah, well, it's we, have to be. It's just like that journey. Have to be, yeah. I've know. always thought there's kind of two camps. There's the guy who wrestled or the guy who's got that competitive edge who is now I'm starting to work a full-time job. I got to get that juice. I got to I got to keep competing. That was me. And then you've got the other guy who is like my dad used to kick my ass. I fought <laughs> This is a way I can still fight yeah. and not get in trouble with the cops. Yeah, and you get those. Those are the kind of the two. Yeah, camp. You don't really see. I mean, Dean Thomas broke down fighters in a different. He he said there's like four types of fighters. You have like your actual fighter, you who would like the fucking Diaz brothers. So they're fucking right. fighters. They just like to yeah. fight. You have like your athlete who's just good at it, and right. like Anthony Johnson kind of I, – I feel, I feel like I kind of fell into that camp. I was just like an athlete, and I like right. to compete. You know what I mean? I'm not a fucking fighter. I don't enjoy that shit. And then you have um, your artists who, like, they go in there, and, I mean, they just like to express themselves. So, like, GSP was a mix. Like, he was a fucking artist. John Jones to some degree. John too, Jones, right. yeah. He's like an artist in right. there. And then um, I can't think of the other one. But uh, those, yeah. those three stuck out for sure. I mean, fighter, athlete, artist. That's yeah. a mine right there, Dean Thomas. He's – I Dude, love that guy. Yeah, man. He just breaks shit down. Yeah. Just so cool. Um, so I met him, humble, too. If yeah. You, if you talk, you just walk up to him and start talking fights, and he's just. Met like, him real briefly in uh, the back of Bellator. Yeah, I didn't like talk to him very much. He was in the same locker room that I was warming up in and shit. That's about it. Good vibes, though. Yeah. yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. All right, gents. It's late. Awesome. Good times. Everybody, until next time, I'll catch you later.